Okay, let's begin our class today. We are going to start in kind of an interesting, um, different way than normal. We're going to start in crocodile pose. I'll show you what that's all about here. It is a face down um, pose. So if it feels comfortable for you to be on your stomach today, we will either bring like, you can have a blanket underneath your chest or your stomach or um, if you have a larger chest, it's kind of nice to give uh, the chest a little bit of space there. And then we'll stack the hands or the fists underneath the forehead and then rest your head on top of whatever it is that feels good there. So maybe a block, maybe a pillow, lots of options here. And if it doesn't feel great to be on your stomach side today, you can always flip over to your back or even come up to a seat as we begin. As you settle in, just noticing if you want to adjust props or grab um, something to go underneath your body at all. Just make sure you feel about as comfortable as you think you can be here. We're going to be here for a few minutes, so if you're feeling discomfort already, it probably won't get better with time, so just keep adjusting. And then if it feels right, just letting your heels kind of splay out to the sides. You might kind of rock the pelvis or the hips kind of side to side a little bit, just kind of loosening up your low back. And then starting to scan your body. Starting up there with your hands and your head, just noticing if you can find a little bit more ease in this pose. No, not too much effort or engagement needed through your muscles. So just kind of softening through your upper body. Letting the floor kind of cradle or hold you here. Checking in with your arms, your shoulders, your neck, your back, upper back, mid back, low back. Just noticing what's going on. Noticing the front side of your body. Noticing points of contact with the floor. Noticing the pelvis, the legs, the feet. And then starting to tune in to your breath. As we are in this prone or face down position, it can be just a little more challenging to breathe. So just doing your best to draw air in and let it back out. We want to start drawing the air down to the lowest parts of the lungs. Feels like we're breathing into the belly, though it's quite subtle here as we're face down. You might notice some widening of your rib cage, some lifting through the back. Just go ahead and focus on this breath as I read a quote from John O'Donohue. This is an excerpt from The Blessing called for one who is exhausted from his book to bless the space between us. You have traveled too fast over false ground. Now your soul has come to take you back. Take refuge in your senses. Open up to the, all the small miracles you rushed through. Become inclined to watch the way of rain when it falls slowly and free. Imitate the habit of twilight, taking time to open the well of color that fostered the brightness of day. Draw alongside the silence of stone until its calmness can claim you. Be excessively gentle with yourself. love that be excessively gentle with yourself 
even if you have come to class today looking for some strengthening or sometimes people come to class wanting a workout, I invite you to consider proceeding in an excessively gentle and kind way so that we can put our bodies at ease, help facilitate moments of building trust with our bodies, building the capacity to feel safe in our bodies, or at least a little safer. This will be a key factor in regulating your nervous system so that you can strengthen, you can work on your goals, your mindset, your body. So taking about one more big breath here. Starting to slowly wiggle your toes, maybe your fingers. We're just bringing some small movements into the body here as we begin to lift the head up off of your hands. We'll slide the hands down next to your shoulders or next to your rib cage. Just slowly start to press your way up the tabletop, which is hands and knees. And we'll find our way right back to extended child's pose, where knees will come out wide toward the edges of your mat, touching your big toes behind you, just starting to sink your seat toward your heels. If your knees aren't quite having that quite yet, you could come back up to tabletop and then sink on back a couple of times before settling in. Alternatively, you could grab a cushion to put between the knees and the seat. If you're ready to settle on in, maybe you come down to your forearms to rest. Maybe you walk your hands up toward the top of your mat and then sink your head and heart toward the floor. This can be a quite relaxing pose, or you can make it a little more active by tenting your fingertips up. So the palms are kind of lifted, the fingertips are pressing into the floor. You can get kind of a stretch through the shoulders and arms that way. See if you can continue to pay attention to your breath here throughout your practice, drawing in low and slow down to the lowest parts of your lungs for that diaphragmatic belly breath. In and out through your nose, if that feels intuitive for you. Let's get a little side bend going here. We'll walk our hands over toward the right edge of the mat and then sinking back in. Since the hands are reaching to the right, we're gonna kinda Think about pulling that left hip crease back. We're even getting a little bit of a side body stretch here through that left side. Maybe you can feel it through your left armpit. Take another breath or two here and imagine that you can breathe a little bit more into that left lung. And in your own timing, then let's walk the hands over toward that left edge of your mat and then sink back in. This time, noticing that right side a little bit more, creating a sense of kind of heaviness or sitting back into that right hip. And feel or imagine that you can breathe just a little more into that right lung now. Just about one more breath on this side. Remember, you can always linger a little longer or get out of poses earlier. You're always choosing your pace. And then walking your hands back to the center, let's start to rise up to tabletop, hands and knees. We'll bring the knees underneath the hips, the hands beneath the shoulders. Let's go through cat and cow here. With your inhale, let's start to lower the belly, lift up the seat, the tailbone and your gaze, creating that little dip down in your back. This is cow pose. And then with your next exhale, we're rounding the spine up. Tucking the chin, tucking your tailbone, finding your cat pose today. Inhale to cow pose, belly lowers, gaze lifts, get a little abdominal 
stretch here if you feel it and exhale to cat go ahead and continue at your own pace here we're inhaling to cow gaze lifting tailbone lifting belly lowering when your exhales roll around we're rolling up to cat keep flowing with your breath warming up the spine warming up the wrists a lot of stuff going here through the joints if ever you want to take a break from the wrists you could uh, choose to come to the fists this will take that deep bend out of the wrists you could also come down to your forearms instead it really changes things up here but there are always options to modify okay Feel free to stay a little longer through your cat and cow, but we are headed to a little thoracic spine twisting with thread the needle here. So we'll bring that left hand kind of to the middle, middle-ish of the mat. With an inhale, let's reach that right hand out toward the right side or way up high, your choice. Rotate your right wrist a couple times up at the top. Keep breathing like normal. Just getting some motion through that right wrist, maybe the right fingers. And a couple times we're just gonna dip and twist here, working on the mobility through our mid back. So take an inhale as you're still lifted. With your exhale, we're gonna reach that right hand down and through between the left knee and the right arm and just reach as if there was something on the left side of your wall, we're just grabbing over there. With your inhale, we're going to unwind, reach that right arm up high again. Exhale, dip and twist like you're grabbing something kind of far away on that left side. One more time, inhale, reach that right arm high. This time we'll thread the needle. So right arm dips down and through, setting the right shoulder inside of your head on the floor if that's comfortable. Otherwise, maybe grabbing a block or pillow for under your shoulder and head. I like to curl that left hand up toward the top of the mat for some extra support here. That's an option for you as well. We are looking for some sensation and stretch through that right shoulder, right upper back. Where else are you feeling it? See if you can keep taking some deep breaths here, counteracting any automatic desire to hold the breath we want to keep it flowing and then we'll plant that left hand by the face press your way all the way up and once more reach that right arm high and then exhale to lower that right hand down to the floor maybe a little closer to the middle of your mat we will repeat this on the left side with your inhale we're reaching the left hand way up high thoracic twists here with your exhale we'll dip and twist just reaching that left hand down and through as much as you can inhale reaching back up exhale dip and twist one last time inhale reach high exhale thread the needle that left hand goes all the way down and through left shoulder left side of the head might find the floor you could keep your right hand in place where it's at or walk your right hand up toward the top of your mat take a few nice breaths here feeling into that left shoulder that left upper back Just about one more breath in, one more breath out. Plant your right hand by your face, press your way all the way up, reach that left hand high, and can't forget about that left wrist. Let's give some circling and some motion into that left wrist now, maybe wiggling the fingers as well. And then when it's time, bring that left hand back down to the floor. We're going to move our way into a downward dog. So if you have blocks and you like to use them, we'll bring them up to the top of your mat. But blocks or not, we'll still spread the fingertips out nice and wide up at the top. We have a very slight external rotation of the um, hands, so just slightly dialing the hands out just a little bit. 
really pay attention to the J or the triangle between the pointer finger and thumbs and really press down into that shape there. Curl your toes under, start to pick up your knees and reach that tailbone back and up. First things first, find your breath. Press into your hands, reach through your shoulders, and then maybe bend into that right knee. And then straighten your right knee and bend into that left knee, kind of pedaling your legs out here if you want. You can continue to walk the dog, it's called. So just bending and straightening opposite knees. Keep breathing. We're only here for about two more breaths. Getting a nice little calf stretch. There's a lot of strengthening going on here. A little hamstring stretch as well. One more breath in. One more breath out. With your inhale, bend your knees and look up to the top of your mat. With your exhale, step or walk your feet behind your blocks or your hands for a rag doll forward fold. You can toe heel your feet out a little wider if you like, letting your upper body hang kind of loose here. You should have at least a micro bend of your knees. And today I invite you to experiment with periodically bending your knees a little deeper and then maybe kind of straightening them a little bit. Some people like to add a little swaying movement here. You could grab opposite elbows if you like. And again, maybe seeing about bending your knees a little deeper at some points, and then maybe straightening your legs a little more at other points. If you've grabbed opposite elbows, let's switch the grip, releasing, and then grabbing hold of opposite elbows with the other forearm on top this time. You might nod your head yes, and shake your head no. Letting the upper body be nice and loose. And then releasing the hands. Let's bend into the knees quite a bit more. Tuck your chin toward your chest and then walk your hands up your legs as you slowly come up to stand. Take your time as you rise. Once you get to the top, we'll find a nice little bounce here so just starting to lift and lower your heels a couple of times i like to add on a lift and lower of the shoulders we're just getting like a nice kind of deep bounce if you've ever bounced on a trampoline <laughs> we're kind of having the same type of effect here we're lifting and lowering getting a good shake good bounce through the body which is really good for circulation really good for our lymphatic system just kind of energetically moving as well now add on any more shakes that come to mind, maybe shaking your hands. If you're someone who kind of likes the little shake of your head, you might do that. You might kind of wiggle the shoulders, maybe pick up a leg, give it a shake, and then the other. No right or wrong way to do this, we're just shaking it out. Oh, so good. <laughs> okay, take your time with your shakes. And then just look down at your feet when you're ready to just plant them. Just find a comfortable um, foot position, maybe about hip width distance apart or a little wider. And we'll flip the palms to face the front of your space. Just kind of hug your shoulder blades behind your back a little bit and engage your core slightly so we're not ending up in a back bend here. With our inhale, let's look with just the neck. So just the neck moving here. We're looking to the left with your inhale. Exhale as you look to the right. Let's do that a couple times. Inhale, look to the left. Your eyes can look over to the left as well. Exhale, look to the right. Keep going a couple times, getting a little bit of motion through the neck here. We're inhaling to the left. And using that entire exhale to look to the right. Let's do that just one more time. Inhale to the left. Exhale to the right. Come back to the center now. With your inhale, let's look up toward the sky, sticking your chin out a little bit so you feel a little bit of stretch through the jaw. And then exhale, sink your chin down toward your chest. 
Let's do that again. Inhale, looking up. Exhale, chin down toward your chest. Follow your breath here for two more rounds using your entire inhale to lift and that entire exhale to lower. Just one more round. We will end with the chin down at your chest when you just get there. Pausing and breathing with the chin down at your chest. We'll temporarily here let go of the need to have the palms spinned toward the front of your space. Just let your arms be really loose here. Let your chin and head kind of be heavy looking down. And then start to rock your right ear toward your right shoulder. And staying here with the right ear toward your right shoulder. Option to use that left hand and kind of like pretend you're swirling some bath water on the left side of you. You can see how a little bit of movement, some swirling of your left hand can um, help those muscles through this left side of your neck here kind of move and open up just again nice and gentle sometimes it can be quite tender so just some small flowing movements through that left hand if you like that good good and then dip your chin back down toward the center of your chest and eventually left your rolls toward the left shoulder pausing there Doing that little swirling motion with the right hand a little bit, just like you're checking the temperature of your bath. Noticing that right side of your neck. Oh, feels like so much is going on <laughs> with the swirl of the hand. It's kind of subtle though for some people, so just staying curious and open. Some poses hit really well, some poses don't make any sense to some people so <laughs> we'll just keep flowing with it all right and then dip your chin back down toward the center of your chest with your inhale just lift your head up to center uh, okay cool any little movements with your neck go ahead and move it out we'll come on up to the top of your mat if you are not there already take a look back down at your feet to make sure they're a comfortable distance apart where you're feeling nice and steady pick up all of your toes spread them out and then set them back down so you have a nice solid grip on the floor with an inhale reach your arms around and up nice and slow expanding through your chest and then joining your hands overhead option to look up toward your hands as they join and exhale, lower your hands down to your heart center. Take a moment to press your thumbs into the center of your chest, your sternum. Option to close your eyes for a moment and just see for a second here if you'd like to set a dedication or intention for your practice today. Could be as simple as a word, a phrase, a mantra. Maybe there's a person in your life who needs a little extra love sent their way today. And if nothing is quite coming to mind, I invite you to consider just holding the word gentle in your heart as we continue to flow. Let's take three clearing breaths now. We'll inhale through the nose. Sigh or blow out of your mouth. Putting that intention in motion. We're doing that again. Inhaling through your nose. Sigh or blow it out. One more time. Inhaling through the nose. Sigh or blow it out of the mouth. All right, let's get flowing with your inhale. Let's reach those hands straight up overhead. Exhale, swan dive. The arms reach wide. We hinge at the hips with our chest kind of puffed out. Bending your knees a little bit, then let your hands fall down toward the floor. Inhale, halfway lift. We're going to straighten the legs. Hands come to the knees, shins or thighs. Nice straight spine. 
exhale lower your hands down to the floor or to your blocks we're going to step just the right foot back and then lower your right knee down to the mat you can always grab a little extra cushion for your knee if you need to with an inhale reach both hands high with your exhale we're going to open arm twist toward the left so toward that bent knee so the right hand reaches forward the left hand reaches back staying here for a couple of breaths breathe like normal active twist one more inhale and exhale bring your hands to either side of that left foot to make this step back a little bit easier you could bring your left hand to the inside of your left foot and then toe heel your left foot way out wide and then we're going to curl the right toes under pick up that right knee eventually stepping that left foot back to our high plank so whatever it takes to get there a little complicated it's okay one big breath in here high plank exhale lower your knees and then lower your chest all the way down to the floor untuck your toes press the tops of your feet so hard into the floor that your knees kind of pop up your hamstrings and your glutes your thighs kind of start working a little bit here with your inhale we're going to lift our head and chest using the strength of our core muscles and spine to make sure that those are the muscles you're using you could hover your hands up off of the floor a little bit here with your exhale, lower everything back down. Let's do that again. Inhale, baby cobra, chest lifting, head lifting. Exhale, lower down. One more time. Inhale, find your baby cobra. Stay lifted here for your exhale. One more inhale here, baby cobra. With your exhale, press your hands into the floor, rising up your tabletop, hands and knees, and all the way back to your child's pose. Three breaths. Your child's pose could have your knees a little closer together, or you could widen your knees way out for extended child's pose, your choice. Just about one more breath in one more breath out with an inhale round your back up to tabletop so we're kind of leading with the shoulders kind of a cat back as we rise and exhale here tabletop if you want to grab those blocks again we're going to downward dog next uh, if you ever want to not do downward dog you can stay and do cat and cow a couple times here Take a breath in as you prepare, curling your toes under, and exhale to your downward dog. We have three breaths. Inhale, and exhale. Inhale, pressing into the hands and shoulders, active, and exhale. Last breath in, and breath out. With your inhale, bend your knees, look up to your hands, but with your exhale, walk your hands to the back of your mat, breathing like normal as you find your way to a forward fold at the back side of your mat. With your inhale, halfway lift, hands to the shins, little tuck of your chin. Exhale, forward fold, bending your knees a little bit. Press your feet down into the floor. With your inhale, we're reverse swan diving. So the arms reach out wide. We're hinging up through the hips and then joining hands up and overhead at the top. Exhale, hands come down to your heart center. Take a few breaths, finding your center, finding that point of balance. Check in with yourself. Remember that intention if you set one today. Noticing your heartbeat. Noticing the temperature of your skin and anything else that's standing out to you about the present moment. And let's take a clearing breath. Inhale through your nose. Sigh it out. Go ahead and 
and blink your eyes open. Let your hands come down by your sides. We'll do a little bit of balancing here. I love a good balancing series, as you know. Um, so our feet will come out a little bit wider. We're going to shift all the weight into that right leg. Hands wherever you want them to be. If you haven't been balancing or practicing much lately, you can always come to a wall to hold on to or find some chairs to hold on to. That can be really nice. We're going to find one-legged mountain pose with that left knee lifting. So just lifting up your left knee a little bit. Your left toes can stay connected to the floor there for some extra support. Or you can flex the left foot and then see if about lifting your left knee to about hip height. Wherever you are is just fine. Take a breath in here. With your exhale, straighten that left leg, either continuing to hover it up off of the floor or touching your heel down for more support. Inhale, one-legged mountain pose, that left knee lifts. Exhale, straighten. Breathe like normal as you touch your left heel down to the floor and then step all of your weight into that left foot, coming to the tippy toes on your right foot. With an inhale, reach the hands forward. With your exhale, we're sweeping them back to airplane pose. So those shoulder blades reach together behind you, arms are reaching back. You can either stay on the tippy toe of that right foot or start to lean forward a little bit and lifting that right foot up behind you. Now this one takes a little practice, so don't try to be perfect. It's not what it's about. We're just balancing on that left foot one way or the other. Take one more breath. With an inhale, see if you can rise up, taking that right knee up with you to one-legged mountain pose. This time, obviously, with that right knee lifted. Exhale, straighten that right leg. You can always touch it down or keep it lifted. Inhale, one-legged mountain pose, right knee lifts. Exhale, straighten. Breathe like normal as you touch your right heel down. Step into that right foot. Tippy toes on the left foot. Inhale, reach the arms forward. Exhale, your version of airplane pose. Arms reaching back, shoulder blades hugging together. Coming to balance on that right foot. Even if it feels like a big struggle, see if you can make your face still kind of calm. <laughs> Sometimes that's a big challenge, so <laughs> maybe choosing that or not. With an inhale, let's rise up. See if we can take that left knee up with us. One-legged mountain. And exhale, step that foot down to the ground. <sighs> with your, um, actually, let's make sure we're up at the top of the mat here. With an inhale, let's reach the arms up and around, joining hands overhead. Exhale, swan dive, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift with a half tuck of your chin so the back of your neck feels nice and long. Exhale, hands come down to the floor or to your blocks. This time we're stepping just the left foot back and lowering your left knee down to the floor. Your left toes could stay curled under or flatten the top of your foot to the mat, either way. With an inhale, let's reach the arms up and overhead. Maybe you can feel a big hip opening moment here through that left hip. With your exhale, let's open arm twist toward the right. Left hand reaching forward toward that bent right knee, right arm reaching back. Take an inhale here. With your exhale, we're just actively twisting to the right. One more big breath here. Exhale. And unwind, bringing your hands to either side of the floor, either side of that right foot on the floor. Or for an easier step back experience, bringing that right hand to the inside of your right foot and then toe heeling that right foot way out wide. Curl your left toes under, pop up that left knee, and then do what you can to step your right foot back to your high plank. Now you can always lower your knees right away here. We're going to be here for three breaths. We're already exhaling. Two more breaths. Inhale. Don't be afraid of that little wobbly shake 
That means we're strengthening. Exhale. One more breath in. You can do it. And exhale. Knees lower. Chest lowers all the way down. Breathe like normal as we set up another round of baby cobra. So the tops of the feet press down so much that those knees are popping up. Those glutes are starting to work. With your inhale, rising up, head and chest lifting. You can always hover your hands up off of the floor if you like, or kind of come up to your uh, fingertips, your choice. And then exhale, lower down. Inhale, rising up to your baby cobra. Exhale, lower down. One more time. Inhale, baby cobra. Stay lifted here for your exhale. One last breath in. And exhale, press your way up through tabletop, hands and knees, all the way back to your child's pose. Take a few breaths. You can always kind of freestyle or fill in the gaps or find your own way a little bit. So eventually getting back to child's pose. Just about one more breath in. One more breath out. With an inhale, rise to tabletop with a cat back. So we're leading with the shoulders, rounding the way up. I feel like I almost sounded like a cat, like a mad cat, like rounding your way up. <laughs> okay, option to stay here for cat and cow or join me in our last downward facing dog. If you are, we're curling those toes under, lifting the knees and pressing a lot through the hands and the fingertips to take some weight out of the wrists. Engage your shoulders. We're pressing the floor away through our shoulders. Breathe here. If you're, the back of your legs are very tight, you can deeply bend through your knees and just work on creating lots of length from your fingertips to your tailbone instead of the legs. Or you can straighten the legs a little more. One more breath in. One more breath out. We're gonna walk our feet out toward the edges of your mat so your toes will be off of the mat, heels on the mat. Bend your knees, look up toward your hands, and then walk your hands toward the back of your mat. We're gonna end up in a little uh, squat here. So for some people that might mean your elbows come to your knees. That's a great place to stay. For other people, you might come all the way down to Malasana Yogi Squat with your elbows pressing in to the corners of your knees here. If this feels a little too deep and too far, you can always come down to a seat. Or my favorite is grabbing a couple blocks or even the edge of a chair and kind of like sitting on the edge of the chair. Let's see about popping the, or puffing the chest up a little bit here so we take out any excessive rounding through the back. This can feel quite extreme, so listen to your body. You can come up to a forward fold, which is where we're headed next anytime you'd like. Otherwise, maybe just about one more breath in and then breath out. Let's straighten the legs, coming to a forward fold, walking your feet in to about hip width distance apart or about two or three fist distance apart from foot to foot. With an inhale, it's halfway lift, hands to the shins, half tuck of your neck or your chin. Exhale, one more fold. Press your feet down into the floor. Inhale, reverse swan dive. Arms reach wide first. Hinge up through your hips and then reach the palms together overhead. Exhale, hands come down to your heart center. Closing your eyes here if you'd like. Notice, notice what you're feeling. Notice your physical body sensations, the beat of your heart, the temperature of your skin, any parts of your body that are talking to you in one way or another. Just 
See if you can create just a little more ease through your body or muscles in some way. Let's have a little sigh of relief here. We'll inhale through the nose. Big sigh to let it go. Go ahead and open your eyes. Let your hands come down by your sides. We have one more go through our balancing series today. So it'll be just like the other side, except we're starting with all the weight on that left foot and that right knee is coming up for one-legged mountain pose hands wherever you want them to be sometimes at your heart is nice sometimes by the side is good too remember the toes right toes can stay down or right knee to about hip height your call take a breath in where you're at exhale straighten that right leg inhale one-legged mountain right knee lifts exhale straighten touch that right heel to the ground breathe like normal step into the right foot coming to the left tippy toes inhale reach the arms forward exhale airplane pose hugging those shoulder blades together behind you and finding some amount of balance on that right foot left toes can stay close to the floor or continue to lean forward Stay or join me in lifting back up, seeing if we can bring that left knee up with us to one legged mountain. Exhale, straighten that left leg. Inhale, one legged mountain. Exhale, straighten. Breathe like normal. Step that left heel down and all the weight shifts to that left foot now. Tippy toes on the right inhale reach the arms forward last time through exhale to your version of airplane nice strong breath when you're ready use an inhale to come back up if that felt too short go ahead and just stay a little longer Otherwise, one-legged mountain with the right knee lifting, and exhale to step that foot down. <sighs> All right, any little shaking movements you want or um, bouncing or anything else while we're standing, go ahead, take a little bit of free movement if you like. And then next, we're heading down toward the floor. So maybe bending your knees. We're gonna come right down to your back eventually. So you can take the knees in with you if you'd like. Hugging the knees in toward your chest one way or another when you get to the floor. And then let's just find some free movement, rocking weight around the back. So maybe a little side to side rocking. Some people like kind of rocking up and down the spine a couple times. But eventually we'll just focus on massaging pressure through the back, especially the low back and the sacrum. The sacrum is that triangular bone at the lower part of the spine that connects to the pelvis. If you've ever heard of the SI joints, that's right where the sacrum connects to the pelvis. So you can let your knees go a little farther away from your chest so your legs or sorry your arms are kind of straight you can kind of circle your knees a little bit here that'll get the weight a little lower down if you're on carpet sometimes that massaging pressure is a little less apparent but if you're on a hard floor i'm sure you can feel how that weight shifts around depending on where how close those knees are hugging in toward your body. All right, let's bring those feet down to the floor here. We'll bring our arms out wide to a T like shape or a little lower, like a V somewhere in there. Let's pick up the pelvis and scoot way over toward that left edge of the mat, set your pelvis down, and then allow your knees to start twisting over toward the right. So we end up in this nice open arm supine twist so knees 
reaching over toward the right. Let's make sure that left shoulder blade stays grounded down or connected to the floor. If it starts popping up and following you into your twist, you have a couple of options. You can either lift your knees back up a little bit until the left shoulder comes back to the floor, or you can just bring your left hand to your left thigh or side of your body and just feel into your twist like that. Option to keep your gaze straight up and overhead or turn your head a little bit to the left. So you're gazing in the opposite direction that your knees are twisting. And then arriving in your twist, just let this moment of stillness illuminate any areas of your body that you're over efforting. Sometimes we kind of grip out of habit or sometimes it's a really actually a really nice way that our body's trying to protect us so if you notice any excessive holding or gripping that doesn't feel necessary for your safety and comfort thank your body for doing a good job being alert and see about releasing some of that grip And even though we are in a twist and that makes breathing less available to us, see about finding your edge with breathing. What does a nice, full, twisting inhale feel like to you here on this side? I'm just kind of accepting what it is today. And then let's start to think about switching sides. So we're gazing back up to the center, knees come up to the center, picking up the pelvis and scooting way over, hips over toward that right edge of the mat now. And then allowing your knees to start twisting to the left. We do the hip scooting thing so that we end up with our spine kind of in a nice straight line near the center of your mat. Keeping that right shoulder down on the ground. Again, sometimes that means bringing props underneath the knees or um, coming out of the twist a little bit. And then option to keep the gaze straight up or slightly turning toward the right. So facing slightly to the right, the opposite direction that those knees are twisting. And then once again, using these moments of stillness to find any excessive gripping or holding, any over efforting, just getting a little bit more of a balance here of ease, not too much effort. And exploring what a full breath feels like here on this side as we twist. And then thinking about coming back to center, gazing up, knees come up, center your pelvis now on your mat. And then any last little movements, poses, twists, stretches, anything else that's coming to mind that you'd like to do before our final rest, go ahead and move or stretch into those poses. And then as soon as you feel ready, find your way to what feels like a resting pose for you. It could be Shavasana, the classic uh, resting pose, corpse pose with your arms and legs outstretched for a more lower back friendly variation. You could bend your knees and stand your feet up at the edges of your mat, kind of tuck your tailbone under so the low back is flattened to the floor and then let your knees come to the center to rest on each other, resting your knees together. Maybe you interlace your fingers and rest your head in your hands. Go ahead and try a couple different variations out and then Kind of settling into one that feels comfortable. 
If you like to close your eyes, now is a great time to blink them closed. We'll spend these last few moments here just being present with your breath. Just becoming a witness to your breath. Your body will breathe for you. You don't have to think about it too much. It's just watching as your inhales roll in. And letting go as each exhale rolls out. It doesn't have to be any more complicated than that. Just watching, feeling as your inhales roll in and being present as your exhales roll out. And when thoughts come in and distract you, that's okay, just re Realign your focus with the inhales rolling in. What does that feel like? And your exhales rolling back out. Softening all your facial features, letting your shoulders be heavy. Letting your legs be heavy, just watch and feel as your inhales roll in. And your exhales roll out. Just a short meditation for us today, but please feel welcome to stay here longer if you'd like more rest. If you are on a schedule and you are ready to start moving along, let's slowly wiggle fingers and toes. Maybe deepening your breath or yawning or swallowing. Rolling the wrists and ankles a couple times. And continuing to reawaken, maybe heading into a long body stretch with your arms and legs reaching and stretching in opposite directions. And then starting to bend your knees and then roll over onto either side, finding the fetal position, knees kind of tucked in. Maybe your bottom arm is a pillow for you. Take one full round of breath here, just fully resting on your side as if you were just nowhere, there's nowhere else to be other than right here, <laughs> fetal position. And at the bottom of that exhale, use the help and strength of your arms and hands to press your way up to a comfortable seat. We will join our hands in front of the heart center, closing your eyes if that feels okay, or maybe just kind of looking down at the floor. And you're welcome to join me in our closing chant, Om Shanti Shanti Shanti, which means peace, peace, peace. If you are with me, let's take a big breath in to prepare. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Bringing our hands, our thumbs up to third eye center just between and above the eyebrows in a little gesture of gratitude. Let's take a little bow forward together now. Peace. And rising back up when it feels right to you.
Thank you all for joining class today. Hope you enjoyed. I am always here in between classes. If you ever have any questions, feel free to reach out.